This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Shaw versus Pingolitas. You all have been together for four years. You have one daughter together, but allegations of cheating are just tearing apart your relationship. Mr. Shaw, why are you here today? Well, Your Honor, I'm here today because simply I, I can't trust her. You know, um, I'm, I'm tired of losing hair. You know, I'm tired of losing weight. Uh, you know, like I've lost three belt loops. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of losing sleep. So I just, I want some answers. We watch litigants and we can tell a lot about what's going on behind okay. before they got here. You said, I can see that you are, you have this nervous energy. You, you said you've lost weight, you go down three, but you ain't got nowhere else to go. You need to stop right there. That's right. You say you're losing no. your hair, you yeah. say you're not resting well. So. And here's the thing, we can see that tension Right. In your body so. the, of what's going on with you. And, okay. and we're just acknowledging that. All of this because of the stress of, on your relationship because you think she's cheating? Well, sir, uh, we have a daughter, you know, that's, that's in the middle of it as well, um, you know, so I want to move past all this for, for the sake of them. And, and the results of today's investigation mean everything to you? Yes, it means, it means a lot to me. So I just want answers, you know. You and want answers for the future of your relationship? Yeah. So if you would find out that Ms. Pingalitis is in fact cheating, what will happen? Honestly, uh, we're, we're done. Everything is resting on what happens today. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Pingalitis, what is your response? I mean, this young man, it's very clear that whatever is going on between you is wrecking him physically, not just emotionally, but physically. Yeah, I'm here today to prove to him that I'm not cheating that I did make a mistake in the beginning of our relationship, but I shouldn't have to pay for that for, for the rest of our, you know, the rest of our lives. Um, he's gone to the extent of going outside of my work with binoculars and watching me and going, yeah, at work, going through text messages, going through all of my personal stuff, trying to find stuff, and I, just, I can't live like that anymore. So you are trying to prove your innocence because you can't continue to stand the frustration of being watched. Yeah. Now, you said something right off the bat. You said you made a mistake early in your relationship. Yes. What mistake did you make? I did cheat earlier in the beginning of our relationship, maybe within the first six months. We were grieving over the loss of our friend, and um, a lot was going on at that time. I was emotional and vulnerable, and my ex still lived with me. Like, not my choice, but my mom's choice. And so things happened, and I was afraid to tell him. I recently admitted to it, but, you know, I was hurt that I hurt him. Okay, so you had this slip up, if you will, with your ex. Yes. And you recently shared this with him. Yes. And you've added to that that you have a concern about the paternity of your daughter. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You know, it was, it was around the time that she... That she stepped out. Yes, ma'am. I can't do it no more. You know, I just need some answers. You have built a bond with this daughter. You have fathered her and nurtured her for the last 18 months. And now... All that's in question. No, it's been in question, Your Honor. I don't know what to believe. Okay. We are going to order you, after this proceeding is completed, to go to paternity court with Lauren Lake. She's a, she's a good friend of ours. <laughs> because however this is gonna pan out, however this comes out, whether you all together or not, you need to have that question answered. And if this relationship is going to move forward, you have to have that question answered for the stability of your foundation. Ms. Pingalitas. Yes, Your Honor. You've cheated in the past. Yes, Your Honor. You've admitted to that. Yes. And... Sorry. Do you have doubts about the paternity of your daughter? No. There's no doubt in your mind? No. But I see that you're crying. Are these tears of frustration having to deal with this issue over and over again? Yes, Your Honor. And so you just want to get beyond this yourself? Yes. All right. You've talked about her cheating in the past and how that hurt you, but you think she's cheating now. Well... Uh, is, that, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Just tell me one thing why you think she's cheating now. Okay. Um, there's, uh... It was a few months back. For the first time in three years, she's never worked past 9, 9.15. She's closed, you know, closed the store. I get a phone call saying, hey, I'm working late tonight till 11. I said, okay. Uh, she said that she was... Behind the, the store waiting on the truck, um, that's where I, where I had, uh, was already at. 
you know, and I said, well, hey, let's, I don't see you back here. Where are you? She hung up on me. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm walking around the building here. They come out, you know, up front. Uh, I could have Who was they? Uh, her coworker and um, Sophia. Who's okay. the male coworker? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. okay, so you're behind the store, and you're calling her saying, hey, where are you? She says, I'm in back of the store, and you're thinking, well, I'm in back of the store, and I don't see you. Yeah. yeah and so sure. then you go around to the front of the store, and you see her with a male coworker. Well, they're, they're walking into the front of the store, but I could have sworn that I seen him adjust his, you know, adjust his pants. Uh, her, she was putting on a sweater. I don't, I don't you know, I mean, it, it, it scares me. Were you in the back of the store or in the front of the store? Um, my boss called me and let, usually I'm the closing supervisor, so I closed the store. And my boss said, go ahead and just go home. The truck driver said he'd park the truck back there, go to a hotel, come back, and they, they unload at 6 o'clock in the morning. So then I went to go t tell Tyrell, which he was already outside. He was already outside at 9 o'clock when the store closed because he was already suspecting, you know, whatever he was, he was suspecting at the time. So he was already out there. And so whatever he's saying isn't true. So you're saying the reason that you were there with the coworker by yourself after yeah. hours, when you were you were meeting a truck that was unloading at your store? Yes, Your Honor. And I understand that. The part I don't understand is when Mr. Shaw saw you walk with a coworker, adjusting your clothes, and what was that about? I wasn't doing that, so I'm not sure what he thinks he saw, but th that wasn't the case. And Mr. Shaw, you know what you saw? He was adjusting his clothes. She was putting on a sweater. So they were both adjusting their clothes. She was putting on a sweater. He was, he was adjusting his, his, his pants, yes. There are cameras and, everywhere in the store, so I don't know where he thinks that, you know, we, we would do anything at. There's cameras behind the store. They're, they're everywhere. Besides the break room. <laughs> but something went off in your mind to make you think she is doing something with this coworker. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. So, Mr. Shaw, is there anything else she said or done that makes you think she's cheating right now? Well, yes, uh, I was at another business trip um, that she had, she had convinced me to go on. Uh, the whole time that I was there, you know, I was just, just steady arguing. And it eventually I got more intense to, hey, you know, how do, how do you feel that, that someone, someone bigger is me hitting it? It messed my... Uh, okay, wait, 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 yeah. wait. All right. You're having an argument, a very intense argument. Miss Pingalitas said to you, how do you feel about another man having sex with me who's bigger than you? Am, is that what I heard? Yes. Okay, Ms. Pigley, did you say that? I don't remember. I don't remember the exact words. But he what said... What do you think you said? He said that no, I... No, what do you think you said? Um, how does it feel knowing someone bigger, th bigger than you is hitting this? You said that to him? I don't remember saying that. Uh, something along the lines, but not those exact words. But some, something close to that. Yes. Well, Why in the world would you say something even close to that to Mr. Shaw? I don't because know. Because I know how I would feel if I was with someone who says, how would you feel if you knew somebody bigger than you was hitting this? Well, I also, uh, I found messages. Wow. And you never said that. No, no. <laughs> that, is, that is way below the belt. Way below the belt. Why would you say something like that to him? There were messages from other girls on his Facebook. He would purposely go and message them, delete the messages, so I was trying to make him feel like he was making me feel. And how was he making you feel? Like he was doing something. And that made you feel how? Hurt, disappointed. So those tears that we're seeing, those represent the hurt that you were feeling. Yeah. And so you lashed back at him. Yeah, trying to make him feel the way that I was feeling. Okay, you know, love doesn't work that way. You do understand that. I know. And when you and say something like that, you can't unring that bell. That's in his head. And now he can't let it go because you popped off with... You, you have confessed to him that you're sleeping around. I, I didn't confess I was sleeping around. I made one mistake in the beginning of our relationship. That's no, all I... No, 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 no. But once you said to him, how do you feel about someone who did hit this, you're like, this is happening currently. I, I said that while... I, I didn't mean, mean it like that. I was just trying to, to make him... I don't know. I don't know. Ms. I understand. And, and, and let me be clear with you. I'm not really fussing. Ah, a little bit. But the point is, when you fight with somebody, you can't say what's gonna make them bleed out. Because once you stab them, they're just bleeding. And if you felt badly, why would you want him to feel badly? 
That's just not how relationships and love works. You don't want the person that you love and care about to feel badly. That defies logic. Mr. Shaw, tell her how it feels for you to hear her say anything remotely close to someone else has been with her. And I want you, Ms. Pingalitis, to look in his eyes as he tells you how it feels for you to lash out at him and say, someone else has been with you. That really broke my heart. Yeah. That wasn't my intention. <laughs> it just seems so, so but, believable because... Talk, I, talk to her, let her I, know. When I had got home, it just didn't seem the same way as I left it. You guys don't understand what I have to go through on a daily basis. I can't, I can't go to the store by myself without him thinking that I'm doing something. Like, I, f I feel like I'm trapped in my own home, like... But, Ms. But... Pingalitas, I understand how you feel, <laughs> but you can't lash out. You all have to talk to each other. There's no communication. That's why I'm asking you to turn to each other and talk. Because you don't know how he feels. You say he doesn't know how you feel. And you've hit him below the belt in two different ways. Not just that someone else has been with you, but you specifically said someone bigger than you. So you've hit him below the belt twice. And I'm, whatever he's done, I'm not justifying that. What I'm saying is you all cannot lash out at each other like that, and you can't keep giving him reasons to think you're cheating. And that is the problem. And when you say he doesn't trust me, it only takes a minute to tear down everything you've ever built up. It only takes a minute. And once you've thrown it away, it takes you years to build it back up. So you can't expect I've, him to I've turn around. I've three years to, to build my trust back up with him. But, but as you're building, you're tearing it down when you say things, I, somebody bigger is hitting this. It's so crazy. You can't, you can't, I mean, you may be trying, but when you take a sledgehammer like that to it, it you just tear it all back down again. So all of these things together, are absolutely destroying your relationship. Yes. So what we have in this case is the question of whether or not the child is his. We have him coming to the store, wondering if she slept with a coworker. And we also have this issue of her it saying to him, I've been with somebody else. Bigger than you. Bigger than you. And for all of these reasons, Mr. Shaw believes that you are cheating. If he finds out you're cheating, this relationship is in jeopardy. It's going to be over. All of this is at stake. Am I right, Mr. Shaw? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This court has done a full investigation. At this time, we would like to hear from forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> Ron, please show Mr. Wolf into the courtroom. Guy Wolf. Thank you. How are you, Mr. Wolf? I am well, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for being here. We're, it's been a minute since we've seen you. Yes, ma'am, it has. Mr. Wolf, you conducted a forensic voice analysis on Ms. Pingalitis, is that correct? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Would you explain how voice analysis works? Yes, Your Honor, it operates on the spoken word. You have two frequencies in your voice when you speak, and when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. Our computer picks that up. In this case, you asked a series of questions of Ms. Pingalitis, is that correct? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Okay. Let's take a look at the first one. Did you have physical sexual contact with your ex-boyfriend on the night Tyrell saw the two of you leaving uh, your house together? No. Okay. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. Now, let's take a look at the next question. Other than what you have admitted to, have you had physical sexual contact with any man other than Tyrell since December of 2014? No. What did the forensic voice analysis reveal? The forensic voice analysis determined that she was being also truthful, Your Honor. Well, the tension was so, thick in here. I would like to say, Your Honors, that I'm, I, would, I would love to get the help that I need to, to get my family back on track, so. 
you all have invited a lot of stress into your relationship that should not be there. At your age, at your stage, this relationship should be fun, it should be exciting, it should be all of those things that you want in a relationship. You all got a little baby, you all are young, y'all are young enough to play with that baby, that's a young man's game. Y'all should be enjoying each other and that child together. You love each other. I can tell by the way you look at each other how this is ripping you apart. Move forward together and you all will have a happy and long relationship. You all need to give each other a little grace. Grace means I know you messed up, but I love you enough to look over it. And if you do that all the time and consistently, you all won't have this tension. You all won't have the stress. You'll have the happiness that you really want, the contentment you really want. Yes, Your Honor. All right, now we have counselors. You both need to talk to them. You both need to get some advice on how to move forward. And as we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of an opportunity to have a happy, healthy relationship. Court is adjourned. <laughs>